All right, good morning. Welcome to our kids' study. Uh, we're going to be looking today at 2 Kings 21, and then later on at 2 Chronicles 33. We've been going through 2 Kings, seeing these different kings. 2 Chronicles I've largely ignored, but it's basically... 2 Chronicles tells you a lot of the same information as 2 Kings. Um, so when we get through Kings, we'll just go, we'll be skipping over Chronicles. But there's an important part in uh, Chronicles that isn't mentioned in 2 Kings. Am I blurry? Oh boy. <laughs> so uh, we're going to look at that a little bit. So 2 Kings 21, where we are is that Judah is God's people, and we've seen that they've been into idolatry, they've been serving Baal, they've been serving other gods. Uh, God said that they would go into captivity, that uh, Babylon would take them captive, they would be 70 years in captivity. Uh, we've already seen that Israel has already gone into captivity. They're going to be 70 years in captivity. They're already in captivity. But we saw last time the King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah in Judah was a very good king. He tore down the idols, the images, the Baal worship there in Judah. And God says, because of that, because you've done good, then I'm not going to let Judah go into captivity yet. Um, and so Hezekiah, he ends up uh, dying. In verse 21 of 2 Kings 20, it says that he died and that Manasseh, his son, reigned in his stead. Now chapter 21 and verse 1, uh, Manasseh is a an evil king, perhaps the most evil king that was ever in Judah's history. And he reigned for a long time. It says in chapter 21, verse 1, that Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzibah. So 55 years he was ruler. And he did evil. We're going to read verses. I'm just going to read straight through verses 2 through 9. And you're going to see all the evil stuff that Manasseh did. It says in verse 2, And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And now we're going to find out all the bad things he did. Verse 3 says, For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah's father had destroyed. Remember, Hezekiah destroyed all those idols and the worship of Baal. Manasseh comes and builds it right back up. It says he reared up altars for Baal and made a grove as did Ahab king of Israel and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. There were two parts to worshipping false gods. One was Baal was considered the sun god. He was like a, a male deity, man deity. And that was like worshipping Satan when they worshipped Baal. They would build a temple and they'd worship Baal in that temple. And then they had a female deity, the queen of heaven. And they worshipped her by building a grove. They built all these trees around them so people couldn't see what they're doing. But they do it outside because then that way, because if she's considered the queen of heaven, she's up there in those stars. So the way they worshipped the queen of heaven was they did it outdoors, a grove around them so people couldn't see them. But then they would be worshipping the stars and the queen of heaven. So that's why it says that when he built this grove, he worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. So this is really as bad as religion can get when you build a temple to worship Satan or Baal, called the sun god, and then to build a grove to worship all the stars. God says, I am the only God. Don't make any images. Don't bow down to any images. Worship only me. I'm the one who created you. But instead, they worship the, what God created, the stars that God created. It says in verse 4 that he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. He built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. He made his son pass through the fire. In other words, to appease these false gods so they wouldn't bring wrath upon him. He even killed his own sons, bringing them through this fire. He says he observed times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. In other words, he's, that's satanic worship when you're, you've got a witch who calls up a spirit and worships this false spirit, this like this devil that's being called up, or like an enchantment. That's like a, a potion or a, 
a, uh, a spell that's being cast on people, using satanic power there, wizards, the same thing. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have shown, chosen out of all tribes of Israel, would I put my name forever. And he set an image there. So you can't really get any worse than what Manasseh is doing. He sets a temple to serve Baal, the sun god. He sets a grove to worship the stars and the queen of heaven. And then when it comes to the house of the Lord, which is considered to be holy, and you worship God himself only, instead he puts a, he puts a, a graven image that he puts in there, a false god, and he worships a false god in the house of the Lord. God says that's about the worst thing anybody can do because what you're doing there is you're telling everybody that I serve God because here's the house of the Lord. I'm going to the house of the Lord, so I'm serving God. But instead of serving God, you're serving a false god, an image. And so that's, you know, that's about the worst thing you could do. It would be sort of like you know, if you had a husband and a wife and you decided that, well, I am going to bring in another woman and she's going to be in my house with me. Well, you can't have that. You can only have one wife. You can't be bringing in another woman and saying, well, she's going to live in here. I mean, the wife of your wife isn't going to like that. I said, because she's your wife. You can't bring another woman in the house and say, she's my wife too. That doesn't work. But that's what he's doing. There's a house of the Lord. And they say, well, here's an image. We're going to serve this image instead of serving the Lord. So it's about the, about the worst things you can do are listed here. And so God promises that uh, he will bring evil upon them. It says in verse 9 that uh, Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. God gave the promised land to Israel because the nations that were in there were involved in idolatry and satanic worship and doing all this evil stuff. And so God says, they're not fit to live. So I'm going to destroy them and I'm going to set my people Israel in the land. And it shows that Israel has gotten so bad under Manasseh, he says the things they are doing is worse than what these other nations are doing. What makes them worse is the other nations, they're serving Baal, they're serving the queen of heaven, they're bowing down to images. But the difference here, what makes it worse, is they've got the house of the Lord and they're serving these images in the Lord's house. Again, you know, that's, that's why it's bad. Because just like if you're married, you can't bring in another woman to that house and say, this is my wife too, and have, be with her too. Um, that's, you can only have one wife. And same thing here. You can only have one God. These other nations were serving false gods, and that was evil. But what's worse is they say, under Manasseh, that they're serving the Lord, but yet they've got this image and they're bowing down to this false god in the house of the Lord. So that's what makes it so bad, is they say they're serving God, but they're really serving other gods. And so they've, they basically drag God's name through the mud by doing that. And so uh, God promises in verse 13 that he is going to have to punish Judah for this. He says in verse 13, I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria and the plummet of the house of Ahab, and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. So you can think of that. You got a dish and you eat your food on there. Well, the foods, you got food particles and everything. So you got to go clean the dish, right? So you go over there and you get some soap and everything and you wash it clean and then you got to dry it. So then you get your towel and you dry off that water and everything to dry it. And you turn it upside down to make sure because gravity will cause any water droplets to come down. So you turn it upside down. Make sure it's completely wiped clean, completely dry. And that's what God says, I'm going to do to Jerusalem. They are so far away from me. They are so far. They've served all these other idols, even in my own house. He says, I'm going to bring them into captivity and I'm going to wipe them clean. All the possessions, all the material goods that they had are going to be taken away. And, the, and verse 16 says that Manasseh shed innocent blood very much. 
till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. Beside his sin wherewith he made Judah to sin, and doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Now the, uh, the story of Manasseh and 2 Kings ends there. And that's why I wanted to go to 2 Chronicles, because 2 Chronicles keeps, gives you a little more information as to what happened after that. So in 2 Chronicles in chapter 33, 2 Chronicles chapter 33, if we start at verse 1, it's pretty much going to tell you what we've already read. But then you can see in verse 7, in 2 Chronicles 33 and verse 7, it tells you the same thing that he said. It says he set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. And he set up that image. And this is something that when we get, after we go to heaven and God uh, goes back to save Israel, there's a man who's going to come. He's going to claim that he is the Christ. He is the Messiah. And he's going to do this too. He's going to set up an image in the house of God. So this is a type of the greatest evil, really, that ever happens. Is that not only is he killing people, and, but he's also serving uh, false gods in God's house. Uh, so it shows you how bad uh, Manasseh has become, how bad Judah. They were supposed to be God's people, and yet they're serving other gods. But I wanted you to see 2 Chronicles because there's actually a good part on this. If we go down to verse 11. So remember, God says, I'm going to send you punishment. I'm going to take that dish. I'm going to wipe it clean. I'm going to take you out of your land, and you're going to take away all your possessions. And so in verse 11, 2 Chronicles 33 and verse 11, it says, Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. So they got the king captive and he's carried to Babylon. They're soon going to be in Babylonian captivity for 70 years. I mean, if you got the king, you know, he's the highest guy. If you capture the king, then... Uh, then the nation is pretty much uh, taken care of. They've been taken captive by Babylon. But look at what happens, and this is what I want you to see that you don't see in 2 Kings, that here in verse 12, it says that when he was in affliction, so when Manasseh, remember all that bad stuff that Manasseh did, it said when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed unto him. And he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Uh, then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. And you notice in verse 15 that he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of the Lord and sacrificed thereon peace offerings and thank offerings and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. So Manasseh did all these bad things. He is the most evil king from 2 Kings there, it says, the most evil king that Israel ever had. But yet in the end, when he is taken captive and he's not reigning anymore, he humbled himself before God. He went back. God let him go back into Judah so they're not taken into Babylonian captivity yet. And he tears down the idols and the images and he commands everybody to serve God only. And so the good thing about this, I wrote on the board here that Manasseh went from evil to good. And a lot of people understand all this evil stuff he did, which was certainly bad. But the good news is in the end, he turned to God. And so I believe, it doesn't tell you here, but I believe that Manasseh, is going to have life in God's kingdom. When he died, he probably went to be with the Lord. Uh, he doesn't end up going to hell because he turned around, he uh, recognized the Lord was God, and he served God in the end. And this is a good lesson for us because there are a lot of people out there who think they understand they've done a lot of bad things, especially like people in a prison who maybe they've murdered people, maybe they've done awful things, and they say, I'm too bad for God to save me. But yet here it is. God rewards Manasseh, takes him out of that captivity, brings him back into the land. He starts serving God. 
Uh, and the point is, no matter how bad you've been, no matter how much sin you've done, God loves you. And He's willing to forgive you of your sins. So if today you've recognized you've done some bad things, and you trust that Jesus died, was buried, and rose from the dead to pay for your sins, then God will give you eternal life in heaven uh, when you die. Uh, just like it seems like that's what happened with Manasseh. It seems like he really did turn to the Lord. So Manasseh is known as a great evil king. Uh, a lot of bad things he did there. Uh, but in the end, he turned to the Lord. And we're going to see after him, there is a, a man named Ammon who becomes king. Uh, not for too long, but then after him is going to be uh, Joash, and the, the uh, Judah is going to serve God um, under Joash. So there is some, as a result of turning back to God here, it seems like then that Judah goes back to serving the Lord. And so it's a good lesson for us to understand that no matter how bad we are, no matter what we've done, God loves us, that Jesus died to pay for our sins, and that he will give us life if we just trust that Jesus died to pay for our sins. Um, that he'll forgive us of anything. There's no sin that's too bad that God won't forgive us of. Because if there was, uh, Manasseh wouldn't have been forgiven. All the bad stuff he did. And yet God forgives him in the end. So there's, it started out very bad, but it ends up being good in the end. So let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus, that he died on a cross for our sins. We pray, Lord, that you will help us just to read your word and believe what it says and serve you so that we can bring glory to you and show your love to others. In Jesus' name, amen.